Hi, I'm Allison for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And today, as part of our equipment series, we're gonna talk about taking your dog on board with you on an airline. All right, so airlines will accept hard-sided and soft-sided kennels in the cabin with you to fly on an airline. So most people are going to use a soft-sided carrier. When using a hard-sided carrier, it is very, very important to check the dimensions allowed on each airline because they differ greatly. And there is a little bit of wiggle room when you have a soft-sided carrier because you kind of can get it into a slightly tighter space than might be um, on, you know, your carrier could be slightly larger than what the, rec the airline recommends, but definitely a hard cut sided carrier needs to be exact, right? I also have found that a lot of times what the airlines are saying is the space allowed isn't really the space allowed because it ends up that kind of window seat, middle seat, and aisle seat can greatly vary in the amount of space that they have. And I have found that the airline will let me pick any seat when I have a dog. So there you go. So soft-sided carriers, um, you can use a soft-sided carrier as your personal tote bag. However, you cannot use your personal tote bag as a soft-sided carrier. It has to be a soft-sided carrier designed for a pet to be in it, which means it's going to have the mesh in certain areas. Um, this is, I don't know what brand it is. This is Bergen. My favorite brand is Sherpa, right? Sherpa is an excellent, excellent source of dog carry-on. Um, but this is a great one. You know, it's little, it's lightweight, has a shoulder strap, has a hand strap, has, you know, a way to get our dog in the carrier. Um, you're going to put some kind of absorbent material in that carrier. It can be a little blanket. Um, you know, typically I'm using a little carrier with puppies. So I like to have, you know, maybe like a pee pad, something really absorbent that I can throw in the garbage if there's an accident. And then in either my um, personal carry on or in the little pocket here, I might have extra ones or paper towel to clean up those messes. Might have a little toy in there to keep the puppy occupied and have it all zipped up. Now your puppy should be able to turn around and stand up in the carrier without it bulging in any way, shape or form. Um, and that is something to remember. Now, a lot of carriers will also have a space for you to open up and just have their head pop out of the carrier. And I mean, that is a good feature if you like it. Um, so a few things about the soft-sided carrier. So typically what you're gonna do is you're gonna book your plane ticket. Most of us book our plane tickets online. And then within 24 hours, you're gonna call the airline and make sure that your pet in cabin can be booked in the cabin with you and a lot of airlines will then let you change your flight if for whatever reason all of the cabin space is taken up or what may have you right um, one of my pet peeves is people that get their dogs onto the plane and then let their dogs out of the carrier so airline regulations state that your dog cat whatever you're carrying on board should be in the carrier the entire time that you are on the plane and sometimes our dogs are a little bit nervous or our cats are meowing or whatever it might be. But the safest place for your dog is to be in that carrier during the entire flight. The other thing is that it is getting more and more difficult for us to find airlines that accept our pets either in the baggage compartment or in the cabin with us. So the more people that are out there kind of flaunting the rules and having dogs out of the kennels, um, the less opportunity we are going to have to fly with our pets. And it might not even be the airline. Like I've had many flight attendants say, oh, can I see your pet? And I'll unzip it and let them see it and I'll zip it right back up. Or they'll say, oh, do you want it out for a little while? And the reason why I don't is first of all, that's the airline regulation. And it's not even sometimes the flight attendants. What if it, there's somebody that's afraid of pets or allergic to dogs, right? So when I am flying with a dog, I try to keep it as low profile as possible, right? I don't kind of flash around that I have a dog with me. I keep it on the DL because I 
don't want people that don't like pets to start causing a fuss about me having my pet on on board. So that's kind of why I like to keep it like kind of really low key. I also think it's better for the pet, right? You don't want to take your pet out, put it back in. Like my pet knows that when it's in this carrier, right? There's your, when I, when I arrive, I'm going to go right to the dog relief area and let you out. But other than that, you are in your carrier. And I think that's the best way to be. So that brings me to another thing. A lot of airports now have a pet relief area, right? So they're a lot of times they're well marked or they're going to be on the airport map or you can look it up online. But if you know, if you're checking yourself in a couple hours early or your flight is delayed, you can find the pet relief area and let your dog relieve themselves and you don't have to go back through security or anything. Same as if you've had a long flight, I like to just come off my flight, find the pet relief area and let my dog relieve itself. And then I'm good to go getting my luggage, getting to my hotel or my destination or wherever that may be. So, um, you know, make sure that your dog does fit in the carrier. When you get on board, your dog goes under the seat in front of you. Do not let anybody convince you to put it in the overhead compartment or under somebody else's seat or wherever it might be. It goes under the seat in front of you. Um, I will sometimes unzip it on a long flight and give my dog a ice cube or something like that. Um, and you know, I think that those things are okay. And other than that, I just try to, you know, make sure that things are really, really calm for my dog and that they are really well taken care of. So when you are traveling with your pet, um, you can also get other carriers that are soft sided like this that are on wheels. Now you really have to watch the size of those, but you can buy a size that is on wheels that will still fit under the seat in front of you. And sometimes those are great because, you know, dogs can get a little bit heavy as you're sherping them through the airport. So just something to be aware of. But the next time you're flying with a dog in cabin, remember, to make sure that you book it after you book your airline ticket. The other thing I would like you to do is make sure that your dog has seen this carrier at some point before you first go to go to the airport. You don't want to get to the airport and the first time your dog's been put in a carrier is as you get on the flight because that's when they are going to be more stressed out. So some of the things I like to do is I'll like maybe put them in it for a couple minutes at home or I'll feed them some treats in there or I'll generally just like leave it open in my office or wherever I might be and let the puppies like kind of go in and out of it. But the more they're used to being around the carrier, um, the better off they are. Obviously some common sense things like before the flight, I'm not going to give my puppy a full meal or even my adult dog a full meal and like, but, and I will make sure that they are as tired as possible, right? So if I have to take them for a little bit of an extra walk or make sure they get some extra play time or I've thrown the ball or the bone or whatever it might be for them just to really get them tired out, um, that's gonna go a long way to helping you out as well. When you are thinking about taking your dog in cabin, one thing to remember is that there are certain height and weight restrictions. So a lot of times the airlines will say that they don't accept um, most dogs more than 12 inches at the withers and greater than 18 pounds, right? So um, I really have never had an airline like weigh my in cabin animal, but that's not to say that it couldn't happen. So just remember, look at the airlines, because again, airlines kind of really are greatly um, different in what they do and do not accept for dogs in cabin. Um, the other thing I like to do, like I said, I'll maybe give them an ice cube or I'll ask for a little bit of water and give them a little bit of water, especially on a longer flight. But on any flight kind of like under three hours, I probably wouldn't offer my dog water. Um, I like to take at least one meal's worth of food with me wherever I go, because if I, especially if I have a connection somewhere, because if I get stuck somewhere, at least I have some food to give my dog you know, in the hotel or wherever I might be stuck. So I might just have like a little Ziploc of food. Obviously you can't take water through TSA, but bottled water, typically I'm gonna use bottled water. You're never gonna use the water like in the bathroom of the airplane, but they're gonna, the stewardess will, or sorry, the flight attendant will typically like offer you water, etc., for your dog, or you can buy a bottle of water. But yeah, you're not gonna use the water out of the airplane. So the next time you are ready to take your little furry friend with you on a flight, um, I hope that some of these tips helped you out. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. Please leave us a comment below, let us know what you thought, and as well, if you have any ideas for future content that you'd like to see, you can put them down there as well. You can head over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com where you can find our free, premium, and subscription content, and we'd love to have you join us there. As well, 
Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications. That way you never miss another free video tutorial. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.